Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings, with me, Greta Chamberlain, and the Realm of Beings. Shifting Impressions, which is one of the vehicles that supports the transmission of the Realm of Beings, is here to assist you in delving into your being by providing numerous topics and discussions for you to intake as you deepen your connection with your inner world. Shifting Impressions is here to assist you in strengthening yourself as you excavate to understand your true nature. Join us today and learn to shift your mindset, shift your thoughts, and shift your focus to recreate your life and produce a new you. Shifting Impressions starts now. Good morning and welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. I'm Carol and I'm here with my co-hosts, Greta, Kathleen, and of course, the Realm of Beings. We would like to express that we have an invitation for everyone to visit us next weekend in New York City from October 19th to the 20th at the New Life Expo. It's at the New York Bar Historical Building. You can get your tickets online at www.newlifeexpo.com. Greta will be giving lectures and doing free psychic readings, which comes in play to with this week's quote. Uh, Kathleen will also be doing a lecture and I will be there to say hi. So we'd love to meet you in person. Come see us. And of course, you can always experience shifting impressions Updates and the latest news on www.therealmofbeings.com, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, and any of your favorite streaming platforms. We at Shifting Impressions are very happy to be here on Transformation Network each Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and 8 a.m. Pacific. Listeners, if you're new to the podcast, thank you for joining us and being part of this experience. These conversations will help you to look at your life and your creation of reality to see what you're creating, how it shows up, and how to help you gain perspective so you can learn how to shift what you are creating in order to create what you want. So welcome, everyone. To new listeners and viewers of the podcast, each week, Greta shares with us a quote given to her from the realm of beings, which the three of us will discuss in a lively manner. And later on in the show, the realm will join us and give us their take on the quote they provided. This week, the quote is dealing with gifts. And the quote was, all of you are given all the abilities that you can use to deal with the realities that you personally create. No one person is better than another. No one has more spiritual abilities than another. You are all equal in the power to create. And in this case, we're, I believe, referring to abilities that some people might call um, psychic or uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other words like um, supernatural. Extrasensory. Yeah. There you go. Like extrasensory, the clairs, I call them, clair. Uh, clairvoyance, clairessence, clairaudio, like all those things. And basically what I have learned, I think, from Greta and the Realm is that everyone has the, all those abilities. It's just a matter of whether we choose to activate them or not. And that's why it seems like some people might have more abilities than others. The truth is we all have the same abilities because we are all creating our reality. For me, I think the ability I would call whatever is the intuition that I have. And I think just about everyone probably has that, that gut feeling of, you know, you just know something without a logical exp explanation. And that's been a pretty good guide for me most of my life. So anytime I've ignored it, I've regretted it. So I think that's my ability. I know Greta and Kathy have activated more abilities than I have and love to hear their take on this. Kathleen, you know, Greta is going to ask you to go first. <laughs> no, in fact, I wasn't. <laughs> oh, okay. My intuition didn't work that time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Create, create, create. Uh, you I just support. wanted to, uh, and then I will turn it over to Kathleen. Um, uh, what's the title of our thing today? What's that what title? are your gifts? You know what? Um, the word gifts is in there because people believe. Many people right. believe that they are gifts. I have a gift. You know, when I'm talking to people, they said, well, I have gifts. I said, you do? What do you have? You know, um, and I try to explain to people, these are not gifts. What is a gift? A gift is something that you get from somebody else mm -hmm. that, um, that maybe you didn't have it before. Or if it's a scarf and you already had a scarf, but now you're getting a different type of scarf. Now, that's a gift. Being clairvoyant, clairaudient, and all those clairs, as you said, those are not gifts. Those are abilities. And anyone who is human, anyone who is human, be it that you think that you're more highly intelligent than somebody else, you know, um, which is really totally irrelevant, but it's the the quote unquote, there are no gifts. You have abilities. Everybody does. And I just wanted to make that clear before we start. And I think you stated that statement, Carol, but I just wanted to reiterate that, uh, that these are abilities that everybody has, that just because you're clairvoyant and your neighbor isn't clairvoyant doesn't make you any better than the person that person, because it just means that that person, in reference to their own lessons, doesn't need clairvoyance. That's mm. where I was going, Greta, because yeah, the, go first ahead, sentence, yeah, the first sentence says, all of you are given all the abilities you can use to deal with the realities that you personally create. And that's the line that's, that, that, that stood out the most for me, um, because if you don't need to activate, um, I don't know, the, the one that deals with the sense of smell, then you, you for your lessons and you won't activate them. So we have a tendency to say, oh, that person has more abilities than I do. It's because they may have some different kind of lessons that you may not want to experience that they, they need those, those have abilities. They need those abilities to help them get through those lessons. So I mean, you know, I don't know if anyone that I don't know if I ever met anyone that says I don't I don't have I don't have any abilities. I don't have any gifts. I think I've heard people say that. And I'm going to, and I never thought much of, about it before until, you know, recently, but I know everyone has abilities. I mean, if you can take, a, 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 there are people that can taste food and roll it around in their mouth and tell you every spice that's in it, whether it's garlic, whether it's this, whether it's that. And, and it just amazes me, but I know that's another type of ability, but they may not see it that way. So they get hired. As what do you call those wine tasters? They can taste the salt right. because yes, they're exactly. able to do that. That's but that's an ability that they chose to activate uh, in 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 this physical reality right now. And you know, I just I just think it's I just think it's very interesting. But uh, you could also activate and deactivate. I've learned abilities that that you have as well, whether you do it on an unconscious level or a conscious level. You know. If you see like an earthbound, you say, I don't want to see them anymore. You might deactivate your ability to do that. You know, So it all depends on whether or not, you know, also the kind of work, like, you know, like if you're a transformational specialist, there are certain abilities that we do need to make sure are, are, are activated, you know, but finding out exactly what these abilities are, um, what they feel like can be a challenge for people. You know, like what exactly is intuition? How do you know when you're feeling that intuition? Where does it come from? You know, to me, those are the, um, some of the challenges that, um, uh, not me personally, well, uh, personally myself. I mean, you know, just trying to understand exactly what abilities are. I, I understand they come from within, but what exactly are they? And, 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 you know, there's somebody sent me a list. It must have been, I don't think someone I've even heard of. It just blew my mind. I'm done. Well, Kathy, <laughs> you, made, you made a statement about 
when you said everyone has abilities, whether they realize it or not, just the fact that they're present shows that they have the ability to create their personal reality and to create those around them so that they can see them, right? I, I, I think that's a great ability. I think it's phenomenal that we can do that. But they don't know that that's what they've done. <laughs> that's why we're here. <laughs> so, so, look, right. Exactly. Okay. Right. Because see that, um, you're right, Kathy. People don't realize that they're creating everything in their lives. And, and they don't realize it when I say to them, can you, if they're talking to me in their house, I said, can you see your bedroom? No, I can't see it. Okay. Well, your bedroom's not there. Your bedroom won't appear there until you actually go there. And every time you go there, you create it. And it's instant. Right. You create it. So it's like uh, most people would not even, they would think that that's some hoodwinky stuff, you know, but this is, this is the thing that we're creating everything that is around us for you to even perceive it. It's a creation of reality. So, and that everybody, like Kathy said, has their own set of lessons to learn from. You know, the, the force, it, when we're learning these lessons really for the uh, uh, experiential evolution of the force, people have heard us say that before. So it's... Uh, what do you need? Like you lady said, what what do what do we need to be able to uh, deal with, you know, our realities in the in the in the lessons? And um, Kathy said something, you know, that you can you can activate and you can deactivate. I've had to deactivate because I realized that, and I didn't even know how I how it kicked in. But it kicked in. I created to be able to read everybody's mind. Oh. And I was going around. People people didn't even say things to me. And I would know it because I would read it. Just like I hear my voice speaking or the two of you speaking. That's how I would, that's how it would come to me in my mind. And so I would ask them. I was starting to get confused because I said, well, you told me such and such. And he said, I never told you that, Greta. <laughs> and then I realized that they really actually didn't tell me that with their mouth. What they did was they told me that I read, they were thinking that, and I read that, you know, uh, from their mind, uh, you know. And uh, so I decided that it was getting to be a little confusing because I couldn't tell uh, at that time, I couldn't tell what the person actually said to me and wanted me to know versus what I had picked up from their mind. And I didn't want to go around reading people's minds. You know, I don't want to hear That's the doo -doo. Doo -doo. Yeah, That's I don't want to hear that. Oh, my gosh. Can you, can you imagine? You know, I saw myself walking down the street and picking up all these conversations. You know, because as you as you have a, a you activate uh, one of these abilities, then it can get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in it. You know, and I decided I just said, well, this is something that um, I do not, you know, want to experience. I don't want to I don't want to walk down the street and hear everybody's conversation or what they're thinking. You know, I just didn't want to do it. So I shut it down. Now, very ironically, when I was teaching school, I had a, a dance company, a little dance company of the students. Uh, they were wonderful. But this one little girl got angry with me and I was walking away from her, you know, and she insulted me dearly. Uh, but she didn't say it verbally. And I turned around and I told her, I said, don't think like that anymore. That's not good for you. 
baby scared her. <laughs> I did. I told her that. She shut up. Because, see, they knew, the, well, the kids knew that I had abilities. It, it, I didn't hide that from anybody, tell you honestly, the truth. So she already knew it. So when I turned around and I told her, I said, I would not think of that. I wouldn't think that anymore. It's the suggestion I'm giving you. You know, however I said it to her. And she understood me. She knew that I read her mind. And she knew I knew what wow. she was thinking. Now, see, my students thought I had eyes in the back of my head. But I'll be very honest with you. Girl Scouts honor. I put two concave mirrors up in the corners of the blackboard. <laughs> so when I turned around and I'm writing, before they realized that they were there, don't you throw that. You better sit down. They thought I was a witch. <laughs> They thought I had eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> then someone said, that flower is a mirror. <laughs> I said, yes, but I used to see you. But I mean, That's you know. Clever, like, Kathy. Uh, that was so clever. I used, what, oh, what ability did I use to do that? Ooh. Intuition. Oh, oh okay. There you go. Something said, these little middle school kids, I've got to. I've got to set the record straight right from the door. And I never smiled until December. And when I did, someone said I looked like Lurch. <laughs> from the Adams family. I had a crush on him when I was a kid. Only you, Carol. <laughs> you uh, I'm up there. Um, oh, I loved the Adams family. That was like one of the best shows on TV. But yeah, I thought he was cute. I had a crush on him. <laughs> oh, my I have God. Like, all thin guy. I don't know. Uh, but. Getting back to psychic abilities, um, where can one go to even, like you see stuff on YouTube, you know, meditate and open up your third eyeball and, 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 and meditate and, and focus on concentrating on um, your clear audio stuff, you know, it's like, then you listen to this stuff and I go, this just isn't, maybe I'm creating for it not to work. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I know I deactivated some because I got tired, Carol. I turned the corner and there's a there's a earthbound, what you call a ghost, 18th century ghost looking at me and better remove that one. And it's like, you know, like I had a whole bunch of them and it's like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to see this anymore. So I guess I deactivated seeing ghosts, huh, Greta? Yeah. Yeah. You see other things, but you not see ghosts. I feel like. I'm in a stereotype in, a, in one of them Charlie Chan movies. What's that little, what's that brother, Roscoe, whatever they call him, that little strange name guy. Yeah, I can <laughs> <laughs> What came to me was the Ghostbusters movie and who you're going to call, and the answer should be Greta. <laughs> you got that right, but don't call me, because I'm right there screaming, running down the street with everybody else. Uh, but I mean, you know, it's just... But when we talk about these abilities, I don't think people know how to even recognize them. And and um, uh, what are they for? I mean, you know, like, why do you need to have um, a clear audio? So I can see why if you don't have a lesson where you need to talk to the dead or whatever, or some other individual from another realm or another reality, I guess you don't have to activate that. But, you know, even... Carol, you might attest to this too. And Greta, when when I was growing up, I would um, say, "Hey, you know, I, 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 did you see that? Did you hear this?" And I was the only one. And people look at you like, "Uh oh, this is the bag of duck crap." That one, you know, something's wrong with it. You know, brains. Well, you know mess. what I what I got from that, Kathy, was that you were trying to learn the lesson of being an individual. And, and appreciating yourself as an individual, not being like everyone else. If they couldn't hear and see what you did, that made you, you, you However, know? However, it led to other challenges. Mm. Yeah. Because it led to some really deep challenges mm. for me, like the need to be seen and heard. Um, mm. um, um, I felt like I was, like I didn't belong, belong, you know? and um, uh, I, you know, when my mother said I was adopted, I believed her. And when I look at other humans on this planet, I go, I'm not one of them because these people, 
I mean, they're as helpless as a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. I mean, a whole lot of them. I mean, you know, it's like, what's wrong with these people? And I, now I've learned not to judge, but it was just, um, just like my mother would say to me, you weren't there. You are not there. And I said, but you said this, you said that. You were wearing this. You were wearing, you heard me talking about it. You heard me talk. I didn't know I was going remote. I didn't know that when they were talking about it, I wasn't viewing remotely. I was going remote, going remote. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing it play out just like you, just on the dials on the television. And I would get so frustrated. I'd just go in my room and close the door. That was my sanctity, Carol. That's what happened with, when, with that, those abilities. I, I'm going to ask you a favor, Kathy, for people who are new to our podcast, explain what going remote means because they may okay. not be aware. Okay. When you, when you, there are people that can view remote. That means that they can sit there and they could, someone can say, take yourself, go see what's happening on the corner of, um, let's say third in Main, any street third in Main. And they do that. When, when we go remote, when Greta and I go remote as specialists, we actually, send an aspect of ourself to that spot. Not, you know, you know, we take, we take an aspect of, of, you know, we have millions of aspects. That's my understanding. And that's what we do. So we actually take ourselves there. And that's how we can also split ourselves up into trillions of Greta's or Kathy's or whatever, and work uh, remotely inside of someone's physical body or wherever the, wherever the realm tells us, tells us to do we, we, we speak it where we're, we are we, we are just we're like the they're we're, they're like the guides on the side and we are the ones that speak the words for them. Uh -huh. if that's a clear way of, of explaining that that's that's my that's the clearest way i can explain it no i think that was great Kathy. i think that explained it very well thank you i would i would like to say though that the united states government uh ran quite a mm -hmm. few uh, uh, projects dealing with remote viewing. Um, right. Some of them yeah. coming out of Stanford University, um, uh, run by the government through that university. Um, and they were testing it because they wanted to see, instead of sending spies physically somewhere, that they could take an individual, sit him down and say, okay, I want you to see what's happening here, what's going on there. And then that person would do remote viewing and, and actually go and look and see the things with that. If you're going just to look, then that's uh, why Kathy with us did not use the word viewing. See, remote viewing means that you're just going to go look. You're not going to deal with what's there. You're just going to go look at it. As an observer. Absolutely. And you we're know, not observers. We don't do we we do not observe. We go in <laughs> to fix and deal with entities that someone else may not see and you mm. won't see them with remote viewing that's why we don't use the word viewing with what we do we say we go remote point blank so there's a big difference um between uh that and doing remote viewing um and um you can go anywhere you can go to another planet been there uh, done that and view and that, yeah. You can go. You can go into anybody and 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 see them if you want to travel in that far, you know, to go. But um, I wouldn't advise it for people to say, "Oh, I want to go in remote view. I want to go see this," and then off you go. Uh, you don't want to do that. Although I'm feeling right okay. now that there are quite. Yeah, a few, I'm feeling right now that there are quite a few people in the audience that have had that experience. I know with Kathy's uh, experiences, she just said, I had one as well when I was a child. I must have been about six years old. And um, they were leaving me 
my great aunts, I was with them, and Uncle Herman came to pick up my great aunts because someone had died in the family. And I really wanted to go to the funeral. And they told me I couldn't go. I had to stay home. I must have been older than six because I was able to take care of myself. They could leave me there and not worry that, you know, something was going to happen to me or I was going to do something foolish. But I know I was less than, uh, I might have been 10, but not not older than that. And I saw them, I saw myself sitting in the limousine between my great aunts, traveling in the cemetery, not where they did the the whole, um, uh, you know, had the service, religious service. service, but them traveling to place the, to go through to the burial. And the significant thing about that was that there was a big snake that had crawled across the, it was so long, it had crawled across the one of the streets inside the cemetery. It was so long that when its head got to the other side, its body was still on the other side. So it was wow. a long snake. I don't know, it just, just lived there, I guess. And I saw it and the car ran over the snake wow. and everybody was going, oh, 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 in the car. Okay. All right. So they come home. And I say to them, boy, that was a big snake. And they <laughs> said, how did you know about that? I said, because I was there. And they said, you weren't there. I said, yes, I was. I was sitting between you and Aunt Nanny. I was between both of you. No, you were not, Greta. We did not take you with us. You see. And I, like Kathy, I just was so, felt so rejected. Uh, you know, that, did. how can you say I was not there and I know I was there? You know, so that, that can, uh, that can cause and you're describing it. And they saw they saw the same thing you did. They Absolutely. Spoke the same words. Absolutely. Verbatim. Absolutely. And still and they, they want to you smack you in the face. Yeah, <laughs> they say you weren't there. You know, and I, I was just I was just so outdone. I said, Oh my God, how can they tell me I wasn't there and I know where I was sitting in the car? You know, I know that. But you know, some people, I want to say this too. Some people are afraid of the abilities that they have. That's the other thing I want to bring up. Yep. They're afraid of them. They're scary. Um, when I was in clinical psych, I had uh, a young woman. Her mother was absolutely scared of her. You know, she was talking about she could see things in the house and all kinds of things. Her mother was so frightened. And I talked to her mother. I said, you know, um, I said, she's all right. I said, you can be, I said, because I can see the things that she sees in the house. And I told her, I opened myself up to that family. You know, I went over to visit them. And I told them, I said, so I told the mother, I said, she's all right. But see, in that psychological uh, arena, and I said this in one of my psych classes, I said, it's very easy to say that someone is schizophrenic because you hear them speaking. They're telling you that they hear voices. But see, there are people that are quite sane, that are clairaudient which means that they can hear, they can hear voices. And it does not denote that they are insane or schizophrenic. So this young girl, because her mother was afraid of her abilities, she sent her to the psychiatrist or psychologist. So what did they do? I was reading her, um, you know, the report. And what does it say? She's schizophrenic. You see, when the child was not schizophrenic whatsoever, 
She just had uh, certain abilities that she was able to to activate. And I've had students that, you know, that I would share my abilities, letting them know, because then you find out the children haven't shut them down yet. See, as an adult, the adults get afraid of them, so they shut them down. But the children pick them up. And they're not afraid to deal with it. You have to be taught to be afraid. That's so well, true. Being, being declared a witch will do it. We got to go to break, Greta. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't. You have I, to. You have to. It's like speaking of witches. When I lived in Africa, and I said, "Oh, so and so is going to," you know, with so and so, but it wasn't. Uh, I wasn't even dealing with the probability. I saw this happening. And so the one thing, they were so amazed of that. And of course, they didn't understand anything about being clairvoyant or anything like that. So they said, they they labeled me as a witch. They said, Greta's a witch. You know, and I said, well, okay, I'll be. Thou a also queen. witch, but thou also has to go to break. All yes. right. <laughs> We want the realm to come in and discuss this further. So at this point, viewers and listeners, we're going to take a short break. And when we return, we will hear from the realm and see what it have about the quote. <laughs> I used to like that show too, Bewitched. Okay, thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back, listeners and viewers. We are at that part of the podcast where we will hear from the realm themselves about the quote they've given us. Realm, are you with us? Yes, we are fully here. Wonderful. All right, realm, we've been talking about uh, gifts and abilities. And the quote that you provided to us this week was... All of you are given all the abilities that you can use to deal with the realities that you personally create. No one person is better than another. 
I like that line a lot. No one has more spiritual abilities than another. You are all equal in the power to create. Realm, would you like to give us more insight? Yes, Carol, we'd like you to repeat that sentence that you said you liked in our quote. No one person is better than another. Absolutely. Because some people think that because they can hear or because they can go remote, that they're better than somebody else. And how that really can reverberate, meaning uh, catching on to something else, is when people get into this whole dimension thing. I know dimensions is not mentioned in the quote, but however, it does play an important part, that whole concept of dimensions. And I'm going to let Kathy, in a minute, I'm going to turn that over to her to talk about how she uh, created the term. I'll let her share that term for it. But some people believe that they have these abilities and now it's lifted them. Notice what we say. It has lifted them to the fifth dimension. Can you imagine? <laughs> So the people that are sitting in what they think is the fifth dimension, they're thinking that they're better than somebody who's still in the third dimension. And if they think that they have more abilities, or most, most humans refer to it as gifts, I have more gifts than person A. Therefore, if I have more gifts than person A, then I must be more spiritual than person A. Not. <laughs> I'll say that again. Not. There was someone Kathy had mentioned in a conversation to Greta that said he was in the uh, 12th dimension. Well, so I therefore. Huh? Don't mention I I, the person's I, I, name. No, no. I said I could still see him. Oh. Well, so I'm see, right there with him. <laughs> see, with the 12th dimension. And first, we've, we've said that dimensions don't exist. They are humanoid constructs. I don't care if you're dealing with quantum physics. It's still a humanoid construct. Once you leave Earth here and you move to other places in Earth, People will look at you strange when you say, well, I'm on the 12th dimension. Really? What is that? <laughs> you know, what do you, what do you mean that you're on the 12th dimension? Are you higher than someone else? You see, there is no higher. You know, humans get into this whole thing about higher, lower, up, down. It's like heaven is up, hell is down. Purgatory is in the middle. <laughs> you Don't know, uh, with life. these things, I'm higher because I'm at a higher functioning level than you. Because I can see things or I can, my intuition, I have a, my third eye, quote unquote, my third eye is really working very well. It's not working. It's working better than your third eye. So therefore, I'm better than you are. Therefore, I'm on a higher dimension than you are. All of that is a bunch of crap. <laughs> that is what we want to get across. It's a bunch of crap. And I recognize that as this representation of the realm of beings that I've just judged something by saying it's crap. But I'm using that word to get across to the audience that leave all that conceptualization alone. Mm -hmm. No one is better than another. You've all come here to be human. We don't care what color you are. We don't care what culture you are. There's what religion you belong to, how much money you have, how intelligent you think you are more than somebody else. Like different people think, well, my IQ is 200. 
So if my IQ is 200, I'm better than somebody who has an IQ of 75. No, you're not. You've just decided that you want to experience what it's like to have an IQ of 200, you see. But as far as spirit, spirit, because the IQ of 200 is part of the illusion. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Spirit, your spirit and knowingness that you are equal, that you are all one. You see, when you recognize that you're all one, then you cannot recognize that you're higher than somebody else. So if you are talking, I'm higher, I'm this, I'm more intelligent, then you're not realizing that you're one. You're mm -hmm. still in a deep state of separation. You're separating yourself based on your intelligence quotient. You're separating yourself on your quote-unquote gifts. You're using these ideas as ways to support separation. And what is being produced in this universe where earth exists in this reality is that we are working under a conceptualization of oneness. If you're talking, I'm on the fifth dimension and you're on the third, you're not about oneness. You're supporting separation. Now, Kathleen, I, I want to turn it over because I enjoy your term for that. I call it a cosmic caste system. And mm -hmm. to me, I thought of that oh, when I read uh, uh, Joyce Wilkerson's book that's behind me on caste. And she talks about how humans create all of these different caste systems, the ones that class and caste. It's just all dealing with separation and how people can buy into those, um, those different little caste systems and just accept them and just live them. And and how they go about doing is whether that's through religion or political power or economic power, exercising that it's it, all it does is keep mayhem and chaos uh, um, uh, happening across this planet. That that's all it does. And you know, so you know what the realm was talking about. People in the fifth dimension, even with the angels, like we had the conversation last week. I couldn't say why would they have a caste system up there too. I can see they can have different tasks. But now the question I have for you, where I'm going to turn it back over to you, is um, um, be, I believe what you're saying. So that means that if someone is of low vibration, they're no better or no less than me either. Correct? See, the low vibration, Kathleen, is this. That is where you have set your experiences to be. And that is where you have set uh, your personality. You see, each one comes in here with a personality that they've decided to experience. The personality may be uh, brought about because of the genetic makeup of the two parents that they've chosen uh, to assist in formulation of their DNA. It's part of the epigenetics. You choose all of this, putting it all together, you see, to create your own experience. That is the illusion, you see. Because the truism is that we are all the force and we are all one, regardless of what we look like, if we're tall, short, blue, you know, there are individuals in this uh, realm that are blue, for real. You know, are you going to say that because you're brown, your skin is brown, that you're better than somebody who's blue? You see? Are you going to say because your skin is really a light shade of pink, that you're better than somebody who has a light shade of yellow. 
see. That's all supporting the cultural framework. It's also supporting the epigenetics. It's supporting what lessons you wanted to learn. And that is your reason for coming here in the first place. However, and there comes a point in time that you may want to realize that there is oneness here. Oneness instead of separation. That is the universe itself, the universal federation, the gods of the three universe. What they want is that we begin to look at ourselves as one, not as separate entities. And doggone it, using the very abilities that one has to separate oneself from someone else. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? You think you're better because you have clear audience than someone who does who is not expressing it? Notice the words I said, not expressing it, you see, because the person has it. It's the person's choice to want to express it, or as the term that you've been saying, activate. But can you imagine that there are certain people that believe they're better than oh, others? Yeah. yeah. They don't realize that we're all the same <laughs> and that we're all one, regardless of what our personalities are showing. You know, there's a whole big thing around the world dealing with politics. Certain uh. people who are in control, you know, they're showing personalities. But when you get down to the truism of it, we're all one with them, and we are the force in oneness. Expressions of the force in oneness is our truism. The illusion is that I'm separate from you. I'm separate. I don't fit you. It's like Kathleen said. When she was a little girl, you know, she felt that she did not belong in the family. She felt that they did not trust her because when she said, uh, gave that explanation of what happened and they thought that she was lying or insane or whatever. And she's a little girl. Can you imagine how she felt? Because some people have fear of those abilities. Can you imagine that there are people that fear themselves? Oh, for sure. Yeah. They fear themselves because they have activated an ability. I may have experienced that realm. Well, you would know better than I. Well, you would know because <laughs> I deactivated it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't think I want to see that. I don't think I want to have somebody when I I say, shut the heck up. And they say, you shut the heck up. And I'm the one that has to shut the heck up. Because I said, I don't know who I'm, who's hecking me. I don't know. I, 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 look, I don't even know. So, yeah. But I realize now that some of these abilities need to be, my challenge was control. Maybe we can address that realm. How do you um come to understand epistemologically the knowingness of what what the what abilities you have activated and how to how to manage them not control them how to manage them because you know as a facilitator carol one of my challenges before i even became a facilitator was controlling or manage managing what i wanted to see what i created mm -hmm. to see and what i create not to see anymore Am I making sense? Absolutely. You know, and, and, and this word that you're creating it, which again, I think is sort of like the foundation of everything anyway. But I didn't realize I was creating it because I was a skeptic. I was like, I was still in the doubting Thomas stage realm. I'm like, well, they, well, they cleared this house. 
Hey, you got that dead going alien is standing right back. I don't mean to say that word again, but that's what I called it back in the day. I said that that individual is standing right there again. And and they said, Well, we could clear it a thousand times, but the minute you think it, you'll bring it back. Mm-hmm. And I'm, then you don't realize that you're thinking it. And I would say, I wonder, the minute I said I wonder, boom. But I thunk has thunked itself here again. <laughs> <laughs> And so it's controlling, not it's managing what you want to create, how to, it's managing how to use the abilities that you created to use, that you activated to use in a responsible, um, uh, enlightened, I, you know, well, it it is high, well, it is responsible. Well, you're not harming anyone, not even, well, you can't harm anyone, but you're not harming yourself. Right. Realm, would you like psychologically? mentally or emotionally harming yourself. Thank you for adding those. Carol, what were you going to say? I was going to say, I thought Kathy posed a very good question there, and I was hoping you'd give us some insight and input on it. Well, here uh, we've observed that there are classes that people can take that say, uh, join our class so we can show you how to uh, uh, activate your third eye, you see. So one thing we would say is, you know, check out classes that you can join to see. Uh, then some of the things you've just activated just naturally. Like most of you use your intuition. Mm-hmm. That is an ability. But it's hard to recognize that ability if you don't understand even what intuition is. Is it a feeling? Is it a thought? I mean, you know, it's like, it's like you could say it, but what exactly is it? How do you know it is? How do you know the isness of that? It's a feeling. One of the ways that we can tell you is it's a feeling. It's like you'll say you're going, you're driving. And something will tell you, you're getting, you want to turn right in your automobile to go down this next street. But something tells you, I don't think I should do that. I don't think I should turn right. I think I should go straight ahead. So you go straight ahead. When you get home, You look on the news and you find out that there was a big accident had you turned right. Mm -hmm. So you used your intuition, which is helping you deal with the illusions in this reality, you see. So they're there to assist you. And mostly everybody does their intuition. It's just that the intuition Quite a few people may decide they don't want to follow their intuition. And the reason why they don't want to follow their intuition is because it's fearful. How how would I know that, you see? It's fearful. You're afraid of it. Or the other word is you don't trust yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't trust yourself about it. But But let me say this, and then I know Kathy wants to say something, that you you use it. The more you use it, the better the handle you'll have over it. But then like Greta said, there'll be something, maybe it'll activate and you decide you don't want to be bothered with it. So then let it go. How do you let it go? You just say, I don't want this anymore. It doesn't have to be burning candles with a big incantation and all this stuff to go on to get rid of not hearing voices anymore. All you have to do is say, I don't want this anymore. How do you activate it? It's real simple. Just say, I want to be able to hear people's minds. I want to be able to read people's minds. You know, if that's really what you want to do. But however, you must be careful with that. Because when you're reading somebody's mind and it's coming up to you, you did not ask permission to do that. 
Mm. Therefore, you are invading. And you must honor the person to say, in your mind, from one higher consciousness to the other, may I read your mind. That is one reason why Greta did not continue with that gift. Sometimes it not gift. Look how I fell into that. I mean, ability. It shows you I slipped a little bit myself after using that word, gift, 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 gift. Oh, <laughs> you see. But the ability, you can ask for it. I want to be able to have a better intuition. Ask for it. I want to improve my intuition. You might even find some physical things that you will create that will come to you to help you do that. Then again, all of a sudden, you'll be practicing it and you'll say, oh, I'm getting better at this. You know, look at, there are several people, I don't know their names, but I know of them, that they're banned from Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Because they use their intuition to know what cards are going to be put on the table. So they keep winning over and over again. So finally they're banned. You can't come here. Can you imagine you're banned because you can uh, read in your mind, you see the cards or you feel the cards, you see? Yes. There's another thing that, ha uh, that people can study here and that's face reading. Face reading is where you study, how does the face change? Because your face does change. It changes in all kinds of different ways, you see. And if you take these classes, I don't remember how long it lasts. I remember Greta thinking about taking face reading and she didn't quite do it. But uh, you can take the class. There are people that teach you how to read uh, faces. Well, you yes. know, Realm? Uh, uh, if you want to, if you want a lesson in face reading, just walk into any middle school class inside of Philadelphia, because I guarantee you, within five seconds, almost every African, it's like it's a, a natural ability. I'm, I I, I, I'm just speaking. Um, they can size up an into a, a teacher within the first five seconds, five to thirty. It's been tested. First thirty seconds is whether or not they're going to have one sub or this teacher, or 30 subs throughout the year, because they can read, they can read the face, they know who's, who they're going to push over, and who they're not going to be able to mess with. And they can read the emotions, and things. Well, that's see, that's a little bit more than just Oh, okay. Reading. Oh, okay. Because now you're getting into emotions. Now you're getting into feeling. Now you're getting into feeling the energy. And remember, it's not just uh, black children. It's all right. of them. Right. I only taught all them. of them can do that because everybody remember everyone is the same. It's the same. They it only tested matter. us. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They're all the same. And children are such wonderful, wonderful individuals. Yes, they are. You know. And especially when they're small, it's amazing things that come out of their little brains. <laughs> you know, sometimes they're more so open than the big adults. That's so true. They have no filters yet. They haven't learned how to separate more things than, than the adults have. So on that note, Realm, we're going to ask you to bring Greta back. Kathy's going to tell us what we can expect for next week's. Um, quote, and I'm going to remind everyone about next week, New York. Come see us. We want to meet you. Okay. What are dreams? Your dreams are ways mm. to explore the unconscious. Learn how to look at your dreams and interpret their meaning. That's really great because this is Halloween season. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so on Halloween, like I'm that. telling you, I'm wearing orange and black. I'm telling you what I'm wearing. <laughs> 
uh, I saw some wonderful decorations earlier today as I was driving home. So a lot of people are very much into Halloween. And Greta has to get her candy wrapped because I'm not doing any of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, we're going to thank Greta. We're going to thank Kathleen. We're going to thank Transformation Network. We're going to thank the realm. And most importantly, we thank you, our listeners and viewers, until we create each other again. Once again, thanks for joining us at Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings on TransformationTalkRadio.com. As you have explored today's creation of reality experience with the realm and me, Greta, each of you is being supported by us in further developing the understanding that you are not just an individual existing in linear time and space, but a multidimensional force of infinite possibilities who is connected to all. So begin to create the realities you want. Join us every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time and 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Shifting Impressions at TransformationTalkRadio.com. So long until we create each other again next Friday.